<laughs> Mitch McConnell, who, who made a, 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 a yeah. curious speech yesterday in which he basically yeah. said the president is guilty, but that uh, the, the yeah. Senate doesn't have the power to, uh, to convict, to act against a former president. Yeah. Uh, what did he think of McConnell's speech? What did you think of McConnell's speech? Well, number one, I was a bit surprised, but I heard this in 1998. I was, I've been in three of the four impeachments. I, I'm sorry about that. But uh, the bottom line, in 1998, you had a lot of Democrats acquit Clinton, but got on the floor and, say, and said how bad he was. So, you know, Nancy Pelosi called us all cowards. I don't think most Republicans care what she thinks. And I think Senator McConnell's speech, he got a load off his chest, obviously. But unfortunately, he put a load on the back of Republicans. That speech you will see in 2022 campaigns, I would imagine if you're a Republican running in uh, Arizona or Georgia or New Hampshire, where we have a chance to take back the Senate, they may be playing Senator McConnell's speech and asking you about it as a candidate. And I imagine if you're an incumbent Republican, there are going to be people asking you, will you support Senator McConnell in the future? So I like him, Senator McConnell. He worked well with President Trump. I think his speech is an outlier regarding how Republicans feel about all this. I thought the impeachment trial was not only unconstitutional. I condemn what happened on January the 6th, but the process they used to impeach this president was an affront to rule of law. He's the first president to ever impeach, be impeached without a lawyer, without a witness, without an ability to confront the, those against him. And the trial record was a complete joke, hearsay upon hearsay, and we've opened Pandora's box to future presidents. And if you use this model, I don't know how Kamala Harris doesn't get impeached if the Republicans take over the House because she actually bailed out rioters and one of the rioters went back to the streets and broke somebody's head open. So we've opened Pandora's box here and I'm sad for the country. Does Donald Trump bear any responsibility for the attack on the Capitol on January 6th? Uh, no, in terms of the law, no, he bears responsibility of pushing narratives about the election that I think are not sound and not true. But this was politically protected speech. The speech on January the 6th was not an incitement to violence. Every politician has used the word fight, fight hard. So I don't think that he caused the riot. His behavior after the election was over the top. There was a pre-planned element to this attack. Um, um, Mr. Wallace, that we need to look at. Did Nancy Pelosi, Pelosi know on January the 5th that there was a threat to the Capitol? What did President Trump do after the attack? We need a 9-11 commission to find out what happened to make sure it never happens again. And I want to make sure that uh, the Capitol footprint uh, can be better defended next time. So I want to look at what Pelosi knew when she knew it, what President Trump did after the attack. And on the Senate side, was Senate leadership informed of a threat? So there was a pre-planned element to this attack, totally unconnected with the speech. Well, and I thought the, the well, managers let, let me... failed miserably in making the case. So to be clear, the takeaway from this trial, as far as Lindsey Graham is concerned, is that actually Kamala Harris should be impeached because sometime last year she posted a link for people to donate to a bail organization. Got it. Now let's just think about this logically for a moment. The reason Graham threatened to impeach Kamala Harris for having posted a link to bail out protesters in Minnesota is an effort to both sides Trump's impeachment. But by that logic, if what Trump and Kamala did was equivalent, and if she should be impeached, then why didn't Graham vote to convict Trump? It's almost like, and bear with me here, he doesn't actually stand for anything besides being a partisan hack. And by the way, the ridiculousness of Graham's false equivalency aside, what he's saying isn't even accurate. The organization that Kamala Harris posted a link to was the Minnesota Freedom Fund, or MFF, which specializes in mitigating the inequities in the nation's cash bail system. Those who can't afford to pay the full bail amount have to either sit in jail until their trial or borrow money. It's a system not based on people's behavior, but their wealth meaning that those who can't afford bail have to sit in jail while they lose yet more money while they await trial. Not to mention the disproportionate impacts the practice has on people of color. It's a system that's decried by both sides of the aisle. New Jersey under then Governor Chris Christie eliminated this system and replaced it with a system that takes into account the nature of the charges. And Joe Biden also proposed eliminating the practice. So what MFF does is put money up front for bail, which is then returned in full once the defendant shows up for trial. 
That's it. The organization rectifies one unjust facet of the system that both sides agree needs reform. They don't advocate for anything that the right says, no burning down buildings or anything like that. They simply try to help level the playing field for people before the justice system ultimately takes over, which this organization plays zero role in. So the fact that Lindsey Graham is villainizing a good organization that does good work and his desperation to pander to Trump is a testament to how much of a disingenuous hack he really is. And beyond that, despite the GOP talking points, the protests in Minnesota and the insurrection at the Capitol aren't the same. There is no equivalency. The George Floyd protests were a civil rights movement, one of, if not the largest in US history, and they were born out of a legitimate grievance, police brutality against black Americans. The events of January 6th, by contrast, weren't born out of a legitimate grievance. They were born out of a lie. There was no stolen election. That was a fairy tale perpetuated by Trump and Republicans to try and steal an election because Trump is too despotic to accept the fact that he lost in a landslide. There is no equivalency. They are not the same. And frankly, Lindsey Graham equating a protest against well-documented and proven police brutality with a protest against non-existent election fraud is all the proof you need that he's not acting in good faith. As for Graham complaining that McConnell called Trump out and so that'll be used against Republicans in 2022, imagine that being the issue for the Republicans who voted to acquit. Not their support of the big lie, not helping foment an armed insurrection at the Capitol that led to the deaths of a police officer and a number of Republican voters and nearly the vice president. All that's totally fine as far as Graham is concerned. It's McConnell's soundbite that what Trump did was wrong, in case you were wondering just how remorse the GOP has over the events of the last few months. Graham even falls back on the baseless notion that the impeachment trial wasn't even constitutional, for which he has zero basis. Donald Trump was impeached while he was in office for conduct committed while he was president. The only reason the trial didn't occur during his term is because Mitch McConnell wouldn't schedule it until Biden was inaugurated. So for a Republican to claim that the scheduling made it invalid while they were in charge of scheduling is just peak hypocrisy even for today's GOP. But if you're trying to make sense of any of this, the fact that Graham concludes by saying that Trump bears zero responsibility for the attack on the Capitol goes to show that he's either blinded by his own desperation to grovel to Trump, or he's so shameless that he doesn't mind pretending that he is. He claims that Trump's speech was politically protected speech, but on no planet is his speech protected. It was incitement, and incitement is decidedly not protected speech. And the way we know it was incitement is because he told a crowd of angry, armed supporters to fight like hell, and guess what? That is exactly what they did. So it's pretty hard to claim that he didn't incite violence when he told them to go to the Capitol and fight, and so they went to the Capitol and fought. In fact, his supporters quite literally announced from the crowd that they were there on Trump's orders. And it wasn't just that they were doing this for Mr. Trump, they were following his instructions. They said he had invited them, and in fact, as we heard, he had invited them. As one man explained on a live stream he taped from inside the Capitol, quote, our president wants us here. We wait and take orders from our president. Footage from inside the Capitol shows when the insurrectionists first got into the building and con confronted police, the mob screamed at the, at the officers that they were listening to President Trump. The insurrectionists argued with law enforcement that they shouldn't even be fighting them because they believed that the commander-in-chief was ordering this. This was the person's understanding. When President-elect Biden went on television that day to demand an end to the siege, one woman asked this. Does he not realize President Trump called us to siege the place? In their desperation to prove their allegiance to him, they proved the very case against him, that he was the reason they showed up at the Capitol. So Lindsey Graham will throw out every excuse that he could possibly cook up to kowtow to Trump, but he's only proving how compromised he is. Because remember, this is the guy who led Bill Clinton's impeachment for lying about a sexual encounter, who's now showing up on national television, twisting himself into pretzels, pretending that Donald Trump is totally innocent of inciting the insurrection that was carried out in his name. If Graham wants this pathetic pandering to be his only legacy, then he is on exactly the right track. 
While you're here, please check out my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen. I take a deep dive into the top stories of the week, and I also interview major players in the world of politics, like Kamala Harris, Adam Schiff, Nancy Pelosi, Pete Buttigieg, Katie Porter, Al Franken, Cory Booker, Jamie Harrison, Mary Trump, and many more. Again, that's No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen, available anywhere you listen to podcasts.